Hi everybody, this is Mark Laffer with Vintage Vero, one of our newest segments, and you might notice that when Wyckoff is not here today, we have replaced him. Can never replace him. <laughs> He's just got tied up today. He would have loved to have been here. He says shout out to everybody for him. But we have our very own Ralph Oko right here in the house. And Ralph, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mike. I tell you, this well, is thanks for having us. This is one of my closest friends, and he did me a huge favor not too long ago. Um, my mom had several original highwaymen paintings, and I thought, you know, it's about time we get them appraised just in case there's a fire or anything bad happens. So that's what he did, and he came, he came out, took pictures with a photographer, front, back, I did everything with them, close up of the signatures, and put together a very cool booklet for, and it has pictures of it, I just said I wasn't going to open this, but um, pictures of the front, the back, I mean it's cataloged so well, and then of course appraised. Uh, it was, um, I'm not going to say what the appraisal is, but they, um, they're just beautiful paintings, and it was so valuable to have you come out just to reassure us that they're going to be, in case of an emergency or anything, they're going to be well cared for. Um, now, tell us first a little bit about you. How did you get into all this? <laughs> well, uh, my name is Ralph Oko. Uh, I've been in the collectibles business since 1959. <laughs> I'm only 35 years old. And, yeah, that went uh, out. Yeah, so it started out with coins and stamps and went to autographs and uh, postal history and then art and then you name it. What happens is you buy collections and they end up, you find things that you didn't know anything about and you learn about it. So 56 years of doing this, you learn a few things. Now moving up to Vero Beach is one of the greatest moves I've made in my, personally in my life. And I became very acquainted with the hiding and I now pretty much live along, along and amongst them. They're amongst the most beautiful people you'll ever meet. Their art is just awesome. It's just, it is absolutely raw, natural Florida, what Florida is all about. Wow. I mean, it's so exciting, too, because we're right here. This is yes. right where it all started. Well, Fort Pierce is known as the home of the highwaymen. And just so you know, there's 26 highwaymen that are enshrined in the state of Florida Artist Hall of Fame. And that's one of them. This is uh, here, uh, the Harold Newton. Uh, this is Sam Newton. This is his brother Sam. Yeah. Harold is, uh, there are three Newton brothers. And a nephew, which uh, you'll see in a few minutes. That's, that's uh, to give you an idea. If you look at this painting, okay. Well, look, let's start. look at the okay. quality, look at the art, look at the colors. You can even feel the clouds moving. There's no wind, but the clouds are there. Look at the colors. And only where we live, now I came from Plantation, Florida. We didn't have those kind of colors in our, in our clouds in the skyline in Southern Florida. Vero Beach, Indian River, the tri-county area, these are the colors you see around four, five, six, seven o'clock at night. Absolutely magnificent colors. And well, 26 artists, if all 26 painted the same scene, every cloud would be different colors. And, yeah. And, and they're beautiful. This is a, a, literally an historic, vintage Upson. Upson is the, the material that it was painted on. Uh, nowadays you use canvas or canvas board uh, or masonite. Upson you, uh, is really absolutely the best color uh, uh, promoting paintings that you can uh, paint on. Uh, and look at the quality. And they also, with the framing and stuff, they didn't like go out and no, buy they, fancy frames. No, they couldn't afford that. That's why they used Upson board. Upson board was cheap. It came in 4 by 48, 4 foot uh, by 8 foot. And the, what the frame is, it's crown molding. What's crown molding? The yeah. frames around the doors and the windows. And it's cheap. And it was cheap. And they made their own frames. This is an original frame made by probably Sam Newton. And this is painted by Sam Newton in the early 1970s. And it is worth considerably more than what your mother paid for it in the 1970s. I think it was like $70. Even that, even, yeah, that's probably that. the highest now. They usually between $25 and $40. It may have yeah. been, yeah. And, but the quality, this is one of the most magnificent pieces of art I've seen. I've, you know, I walked into your mom's house and there were four, four of them and that was number one. There's no question, unequivocally. And you brought this today. I, I did, and, and you know, I wanted to bring this because this not just is one of my favorite, but the uses of color yes. that they use, like you were saying, and they all have a little different uh, 
you know, of course, they're all a little different character, but you can tell a highwayman painting. Pretty much. No matter where you go. Pretty much. But yeah. you can see a knockoff, too. Pretty much, and we'll, you'll see in a minute. <laughs> um, the thing about this picture, just, just look in front. Imagine you're driving in the backwoods of Florida. You get out, you stop the car, you get out of the car, and you're standing by the fence, and you're looking, and this is now what you're looking at. Yeah. You're looking live at a picture right what Florida looks like. That's the way it looks. And you go on west of town, you can still find that. Absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. Probably not the next 10 years, but... Yeah, yeah, hopefully they will. Hopefully they'll preserve some of that. Now, you said there were several original highwaymen that are in the Hall of Fame. Right. I didn't even know there was a Hall of Fame. Yes, 2004, 26 of them were in that room. Where's uh, the Hall of Fame at? Tallahassee, Florida. Ah. And uh, several of the paintings by several of the artists hang in the museums there and in the governor's mansion. They in Washington, D.C., and the, the, the uh, uh, galleries throughout the country, and collectors are all over the world. Now, in my case, five years ago, I was probably selling 95% to Florida, and of that 95%, probably 75% to Indian River. Now, more than half of the paintings that I sell, painted by high women, yeah. go out of the state of Florida. Wow. Amazing. The, the knowledge is there. If you wanted to buy a high women painting, where would you go? Well, in my case, you go I to you. I, well, you go to me, of course. There are other dealers. I'm not the only buyer, not the only seller, not the only collector. But uh, it's like anything else. We're, we're all ambassadors for the industry we're in. But you know, though, um, you know, I don't. I, I I'm a trusting person, but to a limit, and I really don't. You're a kind of person that I can tell everybody that. They could turn over whatever they wanted to you and trust you implicably that you were not going to rip them off. You would do the best thing for them and I wouldn't even consider going anywhere else. Well, I appreciate that. You have to understand, nobody's in business for 59 years if they have ripped off people, if they have not treated them well. My policy is I have to do what's best for you, the client, not what's best for me. Show us show us this, uh, show us the, the real one and then show us the knockoff one. Well, it's, this is great. This is uh, by Chica Wheeler, Charles Chica Wheeler. This is a modern painting within the last 12 months. If, take okay. a look at the heavy use yeah, of the palette. It's almost 3D. It's exactly what I call it. It's a 3D effect. And uh, they're always signed. His signature is down here in red. He likes to sign it like yeah, inconspicuously because he doesn't want that to, to appear in, in a painting. And as a rule, what I do. When I buy it personally from the artist, I have them sign it on the back. This is like a seal of authenticity that not only did I paint it and sign it, but I'm also saying, yes, this is mine on the back. And he's one of the 26 high women, one of the nicest men you'll ever meet, extremely intelligent. And I can sit down and have a conversation to about football or politics or religion, but fishing, he loves fishing, and he's just a real nice man. That's amazing, and he lives here in the area. He lives in Fort Pierce. And uh, he's, he kind of likes to hibernate. He's a recluse. And he and I just hit it off. We share the same birth month. I think, I think a lot of the highwaymen really, um, they're, they're not out there, you no. know, hey, here's me. I want a showing. I want a studio. They weren't like that back then. They were just people trying to make ends meet. Well, many of them were. And they were very talented. Yeah, they were picking the, 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 literally fruit in the groves is what they were doing. But you've had some that worked in factories, some were teachers, and they're extremely intelligent. One thing you'll, you'll never, you can meet all the high women you want, you'll never hear them swear once. I have never heard wow. anyone use any profanity of any kind whatsoever. Right. They believe in the Bible, believe in God, they're very God-fearing, they believe in families, and, but they're humans like the rest of us. Now this is quite This is now very interesting, because if you'll see the signature wherever I can find it, uh, you'll see T. Newton. Uh -huh. Now, who's Tracy Newton? And that's why I brought it. This is Sam Newton's son. That's why no I brought way. it. This is considered second generation. You have different categories. You've got the high women, second generation, and then you've got Florida uh, high women style or Indian River style, mm -hmm. which what you, uh, the majority of people call knockoffs because they look like Florida and they look like high women, but they're not. So now, is this typical of the new generation using more of a pastel effect rather than the bold, you know? Uh, there's really, there's really, actually, if you see some of the other paintings, they'll be comparable, not in yeah. quality, but as, would you like to be able to paint this? I would. <laughs> I would love to have the ability to paint I, I can't no even talent get stiff figures. So these, he's extremely talented. 
uh, this is the only one that I was able to grab quickly to bring here, but he's extremely prolific, he's very colorful, very, very talented. And uh, uh, you have several second generation uh, uh, artists. You Did that just get discounted now because it just like whacked it on the table? No, but your camera's going to be with us. <laughs> wow, Rob, I mean, this was really, um, this is really educational. And are there local museums? You, what, that you we have, can go and well, you can go right across the bridge to the uh, uh, museum uh, at Riverside Park. Mm -hmm. And every so often, at least once a year, they have a showing of high women paintings. If you go to Fort Pierce, you have the Bacchus Museum, and that has many. Beanie uh, Bacchus, that's Beanie right. Beanie Bacchus is really the father of the, uh, the what we now call the high women. That would be an excellent subject for you for another show if you want. Yeah. I, I feel like I know the man. I've never met him. He died before I came down here. But I would love to have met him. One of the greatest, a man that fortunately had the foresight to treat people equally. If, if, you, have, if you have enough time, I just want to give you one story. Sure, sure, sure. Imagine 1960s, highly segregational uh, um, time in this country. Somebody goes to his house and uh, says, hey, what are these colored people doing in, in, the, in your house there? And Beanie Backus looks and says, I don't see any colored people. I just see good people. Yeah. The point is, he's colorblind. He didn't care about the color of people. He, he cared about the quality of people. And my philosophy has always been that I'm prejudiced. I either like you or don't because you're good or you're not good. There's no, no other prejudice. If we could, if everybody in the world had that attitude, uh, yeah, we wouldn't have the, the issues we do today. <laughs> uh, and, let me, and this probably is a, an ignorant question, but were all of the original highwaymen, were they all black? Yes. There were 20, of the 20, well, first of all, as a rule, they were all black, yes. They're, of the 26, there's one woman, Mary Ann Carroll, and 25 men. Of the 26, 10 are deceased, there's still 16 still alive, and some are younger. The, the oldest one would have been born approximately 1938, and the youngest one about 1950, December of 1950. He's the youngest of all of them. Is, is, I think Sam's still alive, isn't he? Yes, Sam is alive. He lives in the Cocoa Beach area, very prolific, very family-oriented. His daughter is now, I believe, third-year student at FSU. Uh, sorry, Gators. And uh, uh, wonderful man, very talented. He can look at you and talk while he's painting, or he can paint and keep looking. And he's amazing. He's just very, very talented. He likes to consider himself a landscape artist rather than a highwayman, but he is a highwayman. He's one of the 20, uh, 26, and he had two brothers, Lemuel and Harold. Harold probably was the first of, of the two, one, two, of the high women is recognized. And then you have Lemuel, who just died last year. So, uh, very interesting history. And my recommendation to people, if you like the art, don't buy it because of a name, don't buy it for because of anything that other than if you like it. Right. If you're buying it as a collector, Absolutely. buy what you like. And, and Ralph, now this would, thank you so much for coming on, but I want you to tell everybody, right at that camera there with Doug, uh, tell everybody how. Now you have other stuff you do. Yes. He's just not like popping on my show. Um, you have several other shows and you are on iHeartRadio yes. also. And that's one of the first places I met you. Tell me all about, tell the audience uh, all about well, how number to one, I'm called The Treasure Finder. I have The Treasure Finder's Roadshow uh, and also Our Veterans Voice. People are, uh, have been complaining over the years that there's not enough recognition for our veterans. So we now have Our Veterans Voice. It's a show strictly on 100% about and for our military personnel, our volunteers. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I should say veterans, not volunteers. And uh, uh, they're, they're both on uh, Waxy FM. They're both on iHeartRadio. And uh, if you ever need to reach me, I am available day, daylight hours, 772-794-0003. Email is Ralph Oko, that's R-A-L-P-H-O-K-O -O at Hotmail.com. Facebook is Treasure Coast Collectibles with an I. And uh, we'd love to have you as our friends. Remember, my job is to do what's best for you. That's my commercial. Excellent. No, that's a perfect commercial. You're hired to do mine. Um, thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Vintage Vero. Check us out on Facebook, InDirtBeachFlorida.com, Facebook page, Vintage Vero. Uh, and gosh, uh, we're on YouTube. There's all kinds of places you can find us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Ralph. And we will catch you all next week. <laughs>